Hey everyone, it's Gareth Flood here. Now let me ask you, how would you like to map out where your company and your brand is in the market you compete in, against the competitors you compete against, but more importantly, against what your customers think of you? We're gonna do that today with a business analysis tool, but more specifically, a marketing analysis tool called the Perceptual Map. So, how it works, typical graph setup, you have the x-axis, you have the y-axis. So normally in business analysis, what you see most of the times is people do a price and units or volume sold. So typically the analysis goes something like, high price, you sell less, lower price, you sell a lot more, and you'll end up with a graph uh, data that looks like that. And you look, where do you play along this? And most of your margins are here versus, you know, pile it high, sell it cheap down here. But that is not what we're looking at today because what we're gonna look at today is an element that most businesses do not track, but is crucial. So what if instead of looking at, you know, sales metrics, units or volumes sold, what we actually look at is on the x-axis, quality. Now this is a crucial metric because people tend to buy quality. So you look at price versus quality. And in that case, what you're really looking for is your data to land up going like this, All right? So here's how you use a perception map. Uh, let's use an example of hotels. These are all brands that are well known, right? So you want to map out hotels. So let's start down here. You have low price, but also low quality. So I'm just going to use hotels I've seen or aware of in your own country. You can, you'll probably have some of these, but otherwise you can use the same example um, for ones that exist in your country. So down here you have low price, low quality. You have brands like Flag, Econolodge, Best Western, and in Europe, I've often seen as a chain called Formula One or Formula Un if you're in France. And then you move up, so a bit more price, a bit more quality. You have brands like Holiday Inn, global brand. The uh, Ibis or Ebis, a brand called, uh, you know, Traveling. And a bit more, a bit more. You're going up, you have brands like Ramada, sometimes called Ramada Jarvis. You have um, the Novotels of the world. Sometimes these can swap according to different countries. They um, can actually be slightly better than in other countries, but generally um, it looks like this. Then further up, you have higher price, higher quality, Hyatt Regency chain the Marriott or Marriott as it's called in America, which is probably technically correct since it's American. Uh, you have the Sheraton of the world and you have the Hilton chain. If you go higher up still, you get super price, super quality. So brands like the W or JW, Marriott and Spa, and then right up uh, extreme, you have things like the, um, you know, boutique hotels or the Burj Al Arab in Dubai, which when it was launched was the world's first six star hotel. So you land up with a perceptual map going like this, and you can do this with any brand, uh, or any brand you compete in, you can do cars, electronics, etc. So it's a, it's a better view of looking at quality and price. So how is this useful? Well, firstly, if you do this with your teams, you can sort out within your own team, what's the perception of where we are? Because if you think, for example, if you think, for example, that you're here 
but you're actually you're here, that's a problem. So sort it out with your own teams. Does your own team have the same perception of, of what you're doing, particularly uh, marketing and management versus in some of the larger companies, you get to the frontline salespeople. They can sometimes, amazingly, have a different perception, and that's a problem. The second key ingredient to do with this is get your customers to do it. So if, if you think you're here, but your customers think you're around here, that's also a problem. So how do you get your customers to do it? Simple way, ask them. If you have customers coming through your door, you could map this out and say, hey, you know, print out pins with some of these brands that you compete against. Say, hey, just put, put these competitors on here. It's a bit like pin the tail on the donkey. Put where you think we are and they'll do it very quickly. So if you have customers coming through your door, offer them a free cup of coffee. To do this, um, another way is if you have a customer event, you can do a little mini workshop, get 10 customers in a room, do the same thing, get them to pin the tail on the donkey with all the brands in your market and that you compete against. The third way is if you have a customer database with say thousands of customers or even a thousand customers, send out a survey, right? So if you simply map, um, you know, one to 10, one to 10 along here, the top five to 10 brands you're competing against and say, hey, just give us a, give us a score, or even if they just do it for you, uh, give us a score of one to 10 via Excel or whatever, you'll, you'll quickly map it out. And, it, and it'll again, it'll turn into this, this corridor of perception. And the corridor of perception is just a perception of price and quality going down here. So that's the first thing to check. Your teams and your customers, does that match up? Very, very crucial. Because if you are where you want to be and that all aligns, then you can work out, well, how do we make more money in our circle of influence, if you like? So the other way to look at this is um, these can potentially be different types of markets. So if you think, okay, yes, we play here and we are happy playing here. How do we go deeper and get more market share within this segment or section of the market? And if you want to go up, then you think, okay, we're not happy being here. How do we move either up or down? You can, if you think you can make more money going down by getting more customers, for example, you can do that. Or if we just want to charge more and go up, we can do that. And what you'll find is many of the brands have already done that work. So particularly in the case of hotels, but this is in the case of um, many branded businesses, um, things have agglomerated or these kind of global corporations have sucked up and poached and accumulated a lot of these brands over time. So um, some of these belong to the same group. So this is how you get into brand extensions. So you think, okay, a brand like the Hilton, uh, they don't want to play down here because people who stay in a Hilton don't want the, the uh, quality of a travel lodge, for example. So they would have to launch a different brand to access this part of the market. But it goes the same going up. So the W, I believe, is also owned by the Hilton. So they say, well, people who want super quality, you know, five or six stars, our brand doesn't extend that far. People won't believe it. So we'll launch a different brand. The Marriott was able to do that. They have a brand called JW Marriott and Spa. So it's a, it's a Marriott Spa Hotel, which is like, say, the difference of four star to five star, and customers understand that. Um, so yeah, you can launch a brand extension or you can uh, get into acquisitions. We'll buy somebody down here if we want to enter this. So that's the other way to look at this. So it's very powerful. So there's a couple of things you can do. The last part is to overlay with any other market or customer segmentation or behavior in the market, right? So let's look at this. What you find is um, a lot of the customers down here might just be cheap travelers, overnight stay, um, traveling salespeople, for example, uh, cheap travel uh, business. We'll put here cheap, cheap business travel. So these are the, the army of salespeople you see driving up and down the motorways um, with the jacket on the hanger in the back of their car. They just want somewhere clean, a decent bed. I'm staying one night, I'm gonna go visit a customer. I'm off the next day caters to that part of the market. And similar here, it could be similar business travelers, but more corporates who are looking more also at the health and safety aspects of the hotel, um, different quality, they might have global travel deals, that part. When you get up to here, 
Sure, some of that could also be there that's global, you know, S&P 500 companies, they'll still be staying here, but you're gonna to start to get more family and vacation type holidays as well. So who are you targeting? Uh, is it mostly business travelers? Is it uh, vacationing families? And up here, you know, Marriott and Spa, that's kind of, you know, luxury high-end type of thing. So that's the other way to look at it, is who, who are you traveling? Uh, who are you targeting, for example? Is it business travelers? Is it family vacationers? Is it uh, luxury experience, uh, high things that you're selling like spa hotels? And that is the perceptual map. Again, the lesson is super useful for mapping out where you are currently. Number one, does that align with you and your teams? Number two, does it align with you and your customers? Do they perceive you the way that you perceive you? Can often be a disconnect. And once you know those, then you think, well, okay, how do I grow my business if I'm happy in the market segment where I am competing against these people? And if I'm not, how do I move up or down? And does my brand stretch to go up or down? So this analysis normally sits in the marketing uh, analysis part, like the market analysis, but also equally should sit within your brand plan. You can do this by product, but the easiest way to do it uh, is by brand because you are looking at uh, quality and perceptions. That's what you're really tracking here, perceptions. So what's the perceptions of my brand? And how do, now that I know those perceptions, how do I use that to increase business? So it sits into your marketing plan and also your brand plan. So if you found that useful, uh, please let me know in the comments below. Also give it a like, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want more useful content and tools and analysis and techniques like this, because I'll be bringing a lot more in the future. And also, if you find this useful for your business and you actually want it, I'm going to give you this template in PowerPoint and PDF in a link in the description below. So just go to the link in the description below. You can click on it, you can download it, you can import it straight into your marketing or brand plan, get working on it. And I have actually put this example in there as well. I'm now gonna show you a second way to do perceptual maps. And actually, this is probably the more common way. I've explained why, if it's price and quality, which is a great thing to track, I don't particularly like going to the left of here because you know down to here, zero price and zero quality, going saying you hang a, ne a negative price uh, and a negative quality doesn't make a lot of sense to me. So if you wanna make it more quantitative and data-driven and actually put some data behind it, with customer research and surveys. You can turn it into more of a graph, effectively using this quadrant for price and quality. However, most people use perceptual maps for just exactly that. It's more perception based. So you can use the same example and just go across here where effectively price becomes low to high price and quality is low to high. I'll just write that in so it goes low to high price, but it's not really quantified. And same here, low to high quality. So then you map your brands across here. So, so let's look at a simple example of cars and brands. This is, perceptual maps are also mostly used to map brands. Where does your brand currently sit? So up high, high price, high quality. So way up here, I guess you've got Rolls Royce of the world. Uh, higher up, you've got uh, you know Mercedes-Benz. You can actually type the brands in. Cheaper, but still high quality. Maybe you've got BMWs of the world. Uh, you've probably got Tesla up here now. Again, just completely off the fly. None of these are specific, and that's the point of it. It's a perception map. Um, then lower down here, you've got cheaper price, but quality still okay. Maybe you've got Ford. You got GM, they're about the same, maybe, in my mind. Uh, and then down here, maybe you've got some of the French cars, Renault. And way down here, you've got somebody like Dacia or Dacia, however you say it. Um, you've got uh, higher quality. The price, maybe down here, is Skoda. Good price, but better quality. Um, high maybe here is v, VW, etc. cetera. Uh, high price, low quality. You don't probably get too many with cars. Um, some could argue maybe some of the Italian cars. I'm not gonna go there, but that's the idea. Uh, so 
you kind of get what I mentioned before. You can still see this tunnel going like this. You'll have a couple of outliers for what I said before. You, you know, if you, you're going to have an issue if you have a high price and low quality. And same thing if you have high quality and low price. Not to say it can't happen. So there we are. Perceptual mapping. So this is how you can break it out to four axes. Still using the price quality metric. But where it becomes probably more useful is to use the four quality metric for things other than price and quality, which is, you know, price is very quantitative. So if you want to use other things, so let's look at an example of um, food, right? If you have food and you want people to rank it on taste instead of high, we'll have um, great taste. And here we'll have poor taste or bad taste. No, you wouldn't, you wouldn't sell anything with bad taste, not knowingly. So you'll have, let's call it poor taste. And here, low, high, maybe you could still have nutritional value. Okay, so we'll call this nutrition and nutrition high. High nutrition, low nutrition. So you can see again how the setup goes. Poor taste to great taste, low nutrition to high nutrition, and you have your quadrants. And now you map out your brands accordingly. So you're going to have brands with or great taste and great nutrition. You're probably going to have a couple of people here. But not everyone wants to pay. Uh, this is the link to price, but okay, we'll ignore that. Um, you're probably going to have a brand here. Doesn't taste as um, as good, and the nutrition value is low. Not going to have too many down here still in poor trade. Well, you probably suppose you could. High nutrition but poor taste. There's probably a market for that. Um, and this is so you'll have brand one, brand two, brand three, brand four. So this tells you how the market is structured, how it's operated, and where the brands currently sit. And there, you can also already see the link to consumer behavior. So who are the people who like, uh, I want great taste and I want it to be nutritional. How do I target them? There's, there's a brand to, for those people. Um, people who like great taste, poor nutritional value, probably more processed foods, fast foods, crisps, etc. So it tastes great, not that good for you. Uh, poor taste, low nutritional value, probably not a great market. Um, and then here, yeah, high nutritional value, but poor taste. Sure, maybe this is like kale and nuts and seeds of some types that, you know, some people are into, but doesn't really have mass market type of thing. So you, you make the link to consumer behavior, uh, but you can definitely map out the brands. This is where your brand sits. So what does your brand stand for? My brand stands for great taste and great nutrition. There's already brands you can think of that do that. Uh, my brand stands for uh, just great taste. It's an indulgence. It's a treat. But we don't we don't mention the nutrition at all. Um, Doritos is springing to mind for me. I love Doritos. <laughs> they taste phenomenal. But I know I kind of ignore this myself as a consumer. So, you know, don't sue me. That's just my personal opinion that Doritos would be a good one. Uh, and I am a fan of those. Um, poor taste, low nutrition and high nutrition and poor taste. Map out your brands. So depending on what's relevant for your market and your brand, you can change these criteria to whatever you want. The system is really flexible. Okay, so that was taste and nutrition. I mean, even with food, you can pick other topics here. Any brand, you can pick what's most relevant. Uh, so you can even ask your consumers what's most relevant to them, and then you map that out, and then you map out the brands uh, in the marketplace. So that is also how you do perceptual mapping on a four box uh, with the greater axes. I hope that was useful for you. If it is, hit the like, leave a comment in below, and let me know what other marketing tools and techniques you would like to see. And also, don't forget to subscribe. Hit that subscribe button so you get more useful tips and tools. And don't forget, I've also given you some templates for free where you can download straight away in Excel and PDF uh, some perceptual mapping templates. Just plug and play. Um, you can use them immediately. Also, in the link below, just go down, you can click on the link, and you can get 
these templates that you can start using immediately in your business for free. So I hope that was useful. I'll see you again soon.